Hello, my name's Gail Something Else. Which is, uh, I think I'm something else, but um, it's shorter than Mind Your Own Fucking Business Facebook. And uh, no, that's not true. I run a little venue called the Something Else Tea Tent Festival, um, uh, which is full of fun signs and art co acts like Cosmo and James and all sorts of other people. Um, I'm just going to sing about all the stuff that um, I've got an opinion on and stuff that annoys me. Um, the first one is about growing up in social housing and Thatcher getting in and the right to buy coming in, so the, the divide between, you know, watching a divide as a kid, um, between people who could afford a new front door and uh, was suddenly better than all the people that couldn't. And, um, and how these days it's like, you know, we look down on different things, you know, in those days you picked on the fat kid or whatever and now you pick on the Muslims or, you know, whatever, really easy targets or the, you know, people with drug issues or the people who are having too many kids, it's terrible. And in those days it was like single mums and all that kind of thing. Um, and it's just about, you know, when the Tories got in <coughs> a couple of years ago, um, I just felt eight years old again, I guess. It's called Old Elvis. I grew up on an edge of town, council estate, you know the ones, posh if you had a wooden gate, the obligatory old teddy boy, tinkering with cars, and fat girls squished into last year's bras, displaying with pride the perfect quad boobs, to the upside down bike boys fixing inner tubes, who were keener on scanning their dad's porn collection But anything's fine to wait hourly erections Toys mostly eaten by tall weeds and grass Where once roses grew We got a pain in the arse When he moonlight fitted with her from four doors down Cause in the old ducks on the corner to frown and yabber with spite about the single mum Whose jeans were far too tight on her bum And whose gentleman collars could at least mow the lawn Instead of sneaking off at dawn We played chicken down on the railway tracks Desperately hunting for pleasure in packs Setting fire to old down by the lockups, oblivious to all of the government's cock-ups, off on adventures, and so unaware of our parents' growing white knuckle despair. That was nigh on 30 years ago, so what's changed an awful lot as it goes? With the slag off Blair, stick pins in him, but imagine if Labour had never got in. Okay, times have changed, I can't seem to let my kids have the freedom that I used to get. We sat on an edge of town council estate, my garden's the one that the neighbours all hate. Old Elvis is still working on that damn car, old dear still point a finger from afar. But no one here lives on beef dripping and bread, they've all got their big TV keeping them fed. But here we go, historic repetition And thanks to this fucked up coalition I'm the parent keeping my kids unaware Of my ever-growing white-knuckle despair next one is about, um, with, there's a couple of uh, MPs in the UK government that uh, want to spin women back to the dark ages as far as abortion goes. Uh, one of them, um, Nadine Dorries, uh, wanted women to have to go for religious counselling to be told that they were murderers and the rest of it basically if they chose not to have a child. Um, and Jeremy Hunt recently um, has said he wants to bring it forward to 12 weeks. Whereas lots of women don't even know they're pregnant at 12 weeks. It's a really hard decision. And um, 
you know, you've got to go on waiting lists if you can't afford to go private and all the rest of it. And also, obviously, you've got the Republicans in America who uh, think rapists should be allowed to sue women who choose, to, their victims, if they choose to have an abortion, among other ridiculous things. Um, but yeah, so this one's called Jesus. <laughs> You're telling me that if I really dare to have a choice Bad, bad stuff's gonna happen in that oh so sincere voice See this skin, this is my wall and you ain't coming in what goes on inside or doesn't isn't down to sin It's my little slice of freedom A place where chains don't fit And this head that you try working on Would never buy the shit That was sold to you to fill a hole That isn't really there Each to their placebo But there's no Jesus to care And if there was, do you think he'd like you Praying on the weak And vulnerable instead of praying For their souls to keep you make me sick with double standards and how you spin those lines We all know you need sugar to turn water into wine Fixing things that just aren't broken can't be justified With your Victorian values, why do you think they've all but died? You will not kill our right to choose, you just push it underground Maybe that's the plan, eh? A few less of us around. So pass me that coat hanger and a bottle of gin. Run a steaming bath and I'll climb right in. And then I guess I pray to your God that I'll get out again. I would have used the butcher's birdies book to who knows when. Everybody makes mistakes and it ain't a fucking crime If your condom spits or you're off your tits or you didn't take your pill on time Or you're just not ready for parenthood or your relationship is shite Or your pregnancy is abnormal or you were chosen as a victim of rape one night Your career is more important or your life is on the skids Or it's just down to the simple fact that you don't want any kids So feel free to wash your own brain but don't make them spare the brunt of the fact that you Bitter, God fearing, right wing, fucking cunt. <laughs> uh, this next one, you may have heard of a, a, a guy called Ian Tomlinson. Uh, during the G20 protests in London in 2009, on April the 1st, um, he, he worked as a newspaper seller. He'd been for a few beers with his mate and he was trying to get home and he couldn't understand why well, he couldn't take his normal route, because there were all these riot police in the way. And um, he was a bit down on his luck at the time, estranged from his family, living in a hostel, which the papers just picked on, so he's dead, so what? But anyway, this uh, one of the TSGs, the riot police in London, as he's walking away from him, and there's video all over YouTube, he's got his hands in his pockets, and uh, he just attacks him from behind, knocks him to the floor. He gets up, and a few minutes later, he collapses and dies. Um, there was an inquest, that, I mean, we met the family, we did a benefit gig for them, and uh, they kind of pushed and pushed it, and there was an inquest, and um, the jury on the inquest said he was guilty of unlawful killing, so it went to the Old Bailey, where he was up for manslaughter, and uh, a few months ago he got off, um, which is ridiculous and just adds to all the figures of police getting off for murdering people. Uh, there you go. Anyway, this song's for him and it's uh, called No April Fools. You don't have to know a man to feel his last sunrise As you watch them lay him naked but for cover-ups and lies He was selling his own headline on the street tonight He'd shout about a man who died in someone else's fight Read how those above their law pushed a man down to the floor Just before he died alone for trying to get home This ain't no April Fool, it's just another example of how the rules 
only apply to us common folk The law ain't an ass, it's a fucking joke Judge a man by how and what went wrong Not everybody has to make themselves belong The powers that be will kill someone when they're already dead To justify the lack of hearing what the experts said About those above their law who pushed a man down to the floor Just before he died alone for trying to get home This ain't no April Fool, it's just another The law ain't an ass, it's a fucking joke You don't have to know a man to know what's wrong from right The fact that coppers get let off is a flag down for the fight And this ain't just about one man, it's about our liberty And if their laws don't stretch to them, then they sure don't stretch to me So fuck those above their law who pushed a man down to the floor Just before he died alone for trying to get home This ain't no April Fool, it's just another example of how the rules only apply to us common folk The law ain't an ass, it's a fucking joke Oh, this ain't no April Fool It's just another example of how the rules Only apply to us common folk The law ain't an ass, it's a fucking joke Um, this next one is, we had a royal wedding last year, I'm sure you heard about it. There's still faded Union Jacks bloody everywhere in England. Um, well, and in Wales as well, shocking. Um, but yeah, we went to Cambridge. We didn't know that they were going to be the, the Duchess and Duke of Cambridge. But we went to Cambridge for some anti-royal celebrations and played on boats. And that, well, we just caused all sorts of mischief. It was great fun. Um, but... Uh, I wrote a song just before the royal wedding, and uh, so you've got to imagine I'm Kate Middleton for the next three minutes, but don't hang me or... Ray. I'm not going to get the tits out either, sorry. It's probably a good thing. You uh, are this... on <laughs> I am on holiday. I'm, well, no, I'm, on, a... on, I'm on tea. Oh. <laughs> um, so this is called Let Them Eat Wedding Cake. You're gonna pay for my wedding Fancy invites make you peasants feel nice My initials on my honeymoon bedding And my mug on a mug at a too high price I want to see a city of butchers aprons With my face on not your pound land gear And my jewellery must cost more too higher than feeding a council estate for a year I want the price tag on my shoes To match a thousand big issues And as for my wedding dress Well, who needs the NHS? Too. I can look down my not very royal nose at the likes of you and you I'm getting hitched on your taxes But the fact is that the poor need to survive too So let them eat wedding cake Until they jolly well spew Of course we're not tying the old knot To distract the masses from the welfare cuts my willy thinks that I am well hot And wouldn't have me used in some publicity stunt 
arson have the ring to prove it and a baby or two for the blood line you'll be paying for their charmed lives yours can go without to feed mine so the price tag on getting wet might mean some folks wind up dead but one day I'll be Queen Kate and who needs the welfare state? Cause Daddy says I'm a princess and old Lizzie thinks so too I can look down my not very royal nose at the likes of you and you I'm getting hitched on your taxes But the fact is that the poor need to survive too So let them eat wedding cake Until they jolly well spew Yeah, let them eat wedding cake While I'm watching my waist Oh, let Wedding cake, just to give them a little taste. Oh, let them eat wedding cake. It's all that they deserve from the table that they're paying for. May these crumbs show them what we think they're worth. This next one's an anti-fascist song, but from a very personal point of view, uh, one of my very close friends of a long time started spouting all this Islamophobic shit and um, got involved with the English Defence League and all the rest of it, and uh, it's like, oh, that's kind of comparable, you know, I spent a lot of time fighting fascists, felt very compromised, very sad, um, couldn't get through to them, so wrote a song about it and got over it, basically. It's called Sea in Red. Oh, she's 
scumbag maintains the reality that they ain't all out to get us. There's no believe or die. This war on faith is in your head, so I guess this is goodbye. When you surround yourself with angels, as I watch you flying to the right. And you've headed it out way, way too far With your blinkers on, hiding the light You traded your imagination For bullshit that you read And the more I watch you eat that fear The more you feel dead to me Yeah, the more I watch you feed that fear Um, I live in a place in England called the Forest of Dean, which is quite anarchic. Um, it's got a massive radical history. You fuck with the locals if you're the government or the crown, and um, they fuck you right back. It's brilliant. Um, and uh, last year, the UK government tried to sell off all the public forests, and uh, we marched and protested and had a big campaign. But I marched with... Um, I marched next to Tories, there were lo lots of anarchists there, but there were people from the Tory party and all other political leanings, <laughs> all ages. Uh, there were two old ladies behind me who were complaining because there weren't enough police for a good kettling, which I thought was uh, great. And you've got little kids high-fiving you in solidarity and all this. And we won, we stopped it, um, which was brilliant. Um, but the whole campaign was really led... Um, in memory of this man, in, in 1808, um, they enclosed the forest for wood for the navy, and it was already a very poor area, and they have all these ancient rights, like mining, they can, if you work in a pit for a year and a day, you can mine there, um, you, you pick your spot, and you, you know, you help yourself, and they, grazing rights, foraging rights, um, taking so many deer a year, um, so they, in, when they put these fences up, they lost all these rights, and the Crown said they would only fence it off for 20 years. Um, but after 20 years, nothing changed, so they started writing letters and peacefully protesting. Another three years, nothing had changed. So this man, Warren James, who this whole campaign was in memory of, really, um, said, right, sod this, and he called all the other free miners to bring the fences down. And... Um, that's what they did, and uh, this, but this is his story anyway. This is called The Spirit of Warren James. <coughs> Back in 1808, by order of the state, began the enclosure of this magical place stripping the locals of their livelihood in the name of the navy and its shipbuilding wood the crown had hit the poor here some 30 years before with their free market desires they destroyed the miners law in came the industrialists profiteering from the land And the ancient rights of foresters did turn to cap in hand The fencing of the Dean was supposed to have been For no more than twenty years and when no changes were seen The locals petitioned for their rights to be returned and for three more long years their survival pleas were spurned Then a man by the name of Warren James By 1831 he had tired of their games Civility was futile so he gave a call to arms For the free miners to tear those fences down and so it 
began, led by the passion of this man. A hundred or more were gathered to take back their land. Machin the surveyor mustered half as many men. They came, they saw they couldn't beat the axe and left again. For three more days they tore most of that fence away. More than two thousand strong when the military came. Armed with a warrant to take James down. The foresters dispersed under the arms of the crown. Warren James now a pawn in their gains. Sentenced to death in a bid to stop the same. Mob rule reoccurring. How dare folks fight for their rights? Then the judge altered his fate to transportation for life. He survived the convict's ride while those around him died. His life now in Van Diemen's land, but with home still on his side. As he moved around the labour camps, his spirit lashed and hardened. The foresters and even Machen fought to get him pardoned. And while they won the fight to give this man some light, the pardon didn't come with a free passage right. It took seven months to reach him and he never sent word home. Already in poor health some five years on he died alone. Warren and James, a scapegoat in their games. Two hundred years on and their agenda felt the same. But the forest spirit is still unfaltering And when they tried to take what's ours we did win for him